Welcome to Palawan, proclaimed number one island in the world multiple times over the last decade. And for some good reasons. Stunning beaches, lots of corals, amazing lagoons, memorable sunsets and above all, some of the friendliest people you will ever meet. I went to this island twice over the last two years and still, every day I would love to go back. Let me share with you my favorite places and the best hidden spots. One way or another you will end up in Porto Princesa, arriving from Manila or Cebu or leaving at the end of your trip. It's the biggest city on the island and the gateway to the beautiful beaches and corals. But I wouldn't suggest staying here too long. If you're up for something quirky though, at least stick around for the ultimate city tour. You will never find yourself in a butterfly garden and in prison at the same day ever again. Tourist madness or a must see? There are conflicting reports online about the underground river, only a day trip away from Porto Princesa. Fact is, this stunning piece of earth was declared as one of the seven wonders of nature in 2011. Yes, she does attract some people, but if you can get past that, she makes up for a unique experience. Before arriving in the most popular spot of Palawan, turn left and chill out in Port Barton. By far my favorite of the entire island. Relatively undiscovered, but still with everything your heart desires. Blue lagoons, white beaches and a room for every budget. The corals are amongst the best I've seen in Palawan. And there is a whole lot of underwater goodness for you to discover. This is the place where you plan to stay a day or two or maybe three, but before you know it, a week has passed. No worries, it's not just you. That's the magic of Port Barton. Continue to the far north of the island and you will end up in El Nido, world famous for her surroundings. The limestone glyphs just seem to tickle the sky and let's not even start about the beaches. Small Lagoon definitely is one of the most mesmerizing places I've ever seen. But all of this didn't go unnoticed. In only a few years time, a sleepy fishing village, only accessible by dirt road, became the biggest tourism hub in the region. Book your room in time, because hotels tend to fill up faster than you can blink the eye. And be prepared to share your beaches with a lot of others. If you're up for something active after your days of lingering, El Nido is your place to go. There are some good opportunities just around town. Or rent a motorbike and find your own hidden gems. Continue east and you will end up in Sibaltan, a small village with only a handful of tourists. Note how the resorts here are built with natural material only. We had an amazing time in here two years ago, exploring the surroundings in multiple ways. You can easily enjoy yourself here for a long time. Just forget about the rest of the world and put your feet in the air. Relax. And very important, returning this year I found out it's possible to access the island hopping tours in El Nido from this place. So get the best of both worlds, I would say. With busy El Nido during the day and your evenings just like this. Search online for Palawan and one thing will be clear. You must get on an expedition between Coron and El Nido. It's multiple days living on a boat, sleeping on deserted islands. Mainly, you will be exploring the surroundings of Linapakan. Untouched by mass tourism, you will find most of these places all for yourself from caves to beaches and if you're up for it, just get your own food. Most online suggestions include Tao Philippines because they were the first to offer these tours. But be aware there are multiple companies doing the same tour nowadays at different prices. So shop around and see what's best for you. I went with Buhai Isla and I didn't regret a single moment. What they say online is true. Don't skip on this tour. The northernmost stop in this province is Buswanga, better known as Koron, a place famous for her World War II shipwrecks. 
a hotspot for divers from all over the world. Also because of the weird thermocline experience in Barracuda Lake. A layer of sweet and a layer of salt water make you dive in 36 degrees Celsius. As Sander puts it, it's like being back in the uterus. Other activities include island hopping, of course, and if it's not too rainy, you can climb Mount Delera. Well, one of the most beautiful views is this one. Look back on your way to Kayangan Lake and make sure you take this iconic picture. Well, those are the highlights of Palawan for as far as I have seen them. But there is a whole lot more to discover for sure. For example, I am very curious for Dumaran, so if I ever go back, I would go there. Local friends tell me it's beautiful and totally undiscovered. And what about everything south of Porto Princesa? For those of you determined to go off the beaten track, there is a whole world to be discovered here. Well, thanks for watching. All information is also to be found in the description box. And let me know if you think I missed out on anything. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, like, subscribe, you know, all that kind of stuff. And check out all the Philippine videos right here in the upper right corner. See you soon. Doeg!